Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 11th of August. Rahul Gandhi condemns PM Modi over Manipur violence and remarks in Parliament. Nawaz Sharif, all set to return to Pakistan, says PM Shehbaz Sharif. And art therapy offers relief to Afghan women struggling with mental health. And now for all the details, India's main opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi on Friday condemned Prime Minister Narendra Modi's inaction over the ethnic conflict in Manipur and his remarks in the parliament during the no confidence motion. Rahul Gandhi blamed PM Modi was cracking jokes as he has no intention to resolve the conflict. He said the Prime Minister can stop the violence but wants the state to continue burning. This came after PM Modi on Thursday came down heavily on the opposition, especially the Congress, over the no-trust motion which was defeated in Lok Sabha. He raised Manipur after about 90 minutes into his speech and said the violence was saddening and assured action over crimes against women. He said efforts are being made to ensure peace. And watching the Prime Minister spend two hours talking about the Congress, talking about the opposition, you know, making ridiculous remarks about the name, this, this really does not do justice to an Indian Prime Minister. I have seen the Prime Minister refuses to stop the fire. He wants Manipur to burn. He allows Manipur to burn. Because if he did want it to stop, there are tools at the hands of, in the hands of the Indian government that can stop it immediately. I know. I have full faith in our army. I know. Meanwhile, both the houses of the parliament were adjourned sine die on Friday, bringing down the curtains on the monsoon session. The opposition alliance boycotted the last day of the session to oppose suspension of Congress leader Adhi Ranjan Chaudhary for unruly conduct. The government's plans to change or to tell something about it, there is no need for them. They have only a little bit of a gutter, which is a gutter of a gutter. Whether they are like Rahul Gandhi, whether Adhi Ranjan Chaudhary, or some other time. Moving on. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has said that PMLN Party Supremo and his brother Nawaz Sharif will return to the country next month to face his pending court cases and lead the party's campaign for the general election. Nawaz Sharif is living in self-exile in London after being disqualified in 2017 by the Supreme Court and became ineligible to hold public office for life after the court's verdict in Panama Papers case. In an interview to local media channel, PM Shehbaz Sharif said his brother would be the next Prime Minister if his party wins the next election. This comes after the President dissolved the National Assembly on Wednesday on his recommendation, paving the way for early elections in about two months. Meanwhile, the frequent price hike of food and other essentials has continued to upset people across Pakistan. A report. The soaring prices of food and other essential items have continued to upset people across crisis-hit Pakistan. The country's annual consumer inflation has remained elevated at 29.83%. The government secured a $3 billion IMF bailout in June. But residents said they have not yet seen any relief. Instead, a sharp rise in petrol and food items to meet IMF conditions has shaken their domestic budgets. They said they have no hope of any economic recovery yet. Meanwhile, the Jamaat Islami Party also held a massive protest recently in Karachi against inflation. 
The frequent price hikes are likely to have political implications for PM Shehbaz Sharif's coalition government as the country is scheduled to hold a general election later this year. Moving on, after the Taliban banned girls from universities and announced that girls can no longer continue secondary education, many Afghan women are facing serious mental health issues and are taking art therapy classes. A report. The relentless ban on education and restrictions on basic rights for Afghan women by Taliban has left 19-year-old Kushi and several others suffering from mental health issues. Health organizations estimate half of Afghanistan's 40 million people have suffered from psychological distress after decades of war and instability. Kushi, who used to be a student of law and political science, has been requiring psychiatric treatment where she was recommended art therapy classes. She says the art therapy has given her respite and a little hope for the future. The Taliban closed universities to women in December 2022, sparking rare public protest. The decision came in the wake of the closure of most girls' high schools and was followed by Taliban authorities ordering most Afghan female humanitarian workers not to work. The orders restricting women from public life have drawn heavy international criticism and Western governments have said it is a key hurdle to moving toward any formal recognition of the Taliban's government. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe, while addressing an event of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, revealed that the island nation's intention to join the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is poised to materialize following the conclusion of credit optimization initiatives. Sri Lanka is currently working with its external creditors to renegotiate over 40 billion US dollars of debt. The country also hopes to initiate negotiations for free trade agreements with ASEAN member countries. The island nation was hit by an unprecedented economic crisis in 2022 due to a severe paucity of foreign exchange reserves. Officials say now it is leaping back to recovery. Moving on, the Tata Group on Thursday unveiled a new logo, branding and plain livery for the Air India as part of a multi-million dollar transformation of the former state-run carrier. The airline's new logo includes a design with golden, red and purple colors and will replace the old logo of a red swan with orange spokes. The rebranding will, however, not completely do away with the iconic mascot of a cheerful Maharaja. As we move into international markets, and beyond the Indian diaspora, the understanding of the Maharaja is not quite so clear. And it is not quite understood to stand for service and humility and Indian warmth and hospitality in the same way. So we wanted to take the essence of the Maharaja, the warmth, the hospitality, the service ethic, and distill it down, not just into the way that we behave, which is going to be obviously part of our DNA, but also in the way that we use it to carry forward some of Air India's legacy in a classy and elevated way. Since taking control in 2022, Tata has spent millions of dollars to update Air India's old planes. It has also upgraded many of its paper-based systems and streamlined operations to better compete with rival airlines. And the South Indian state of Kerala is all geared up for the iconic Nehru Trophy boat race, popularly known as the Snake Boat Race. The annual event, held in August, draws thousands of enthusiasts and tourists from across the world. The participants were seen practicing hard ahead of the race, slated to be held on Saturday. The authorities have made arrangements for security and accommodation for the participants. This year, for the first time, there will also be an all-women's team participating. 
The Nehru Trophy race started in 1952, but the snake boat races can be dated back to the 13th century. There would be um, thousands thronging to the venue. Uh, there would be uh, like more than you know, more than 10, 20 times watching watching it from across the world. And this year we have a speciality, Norca, by the New India program, uh, has arranged for around 60 guests from around 15 selected countries uh, who would be witnessing this uh, this gala uh, from from the boats arranged specifically for them. I am coming to see the the race boat. Uh, I'm so excited because I really like traditional uh, things so I hope it's gonna be a good race and I'm really happy that you are keeping this tradition uh, and let's see who is the, the fastest team. <laughs> That's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.